الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين ما بعد الدرس الخامس lesson five uh, in this lesson we learn two main principles uh, the first of them is referred to is المضاف which means the possession المضاف something that is possessed والمضاف إليه والمضاف إليه and the possessor والمضافو إليه. so in this lesson the possessed and the possessor. I when we saying something belongs to someone. and if we take a noun for example. كتابون. okay. we have كتابون. this means a book. then we have محمدون. Muhammadun. So a book and Muhammad. But now we want to say something like Muhammad's book. In Arabic, we do this with this construction called the Mudaf, Mudaf ilayhi. And it looks something like this Kitabun becomes Kitabu. With just one Dhamma. As I said before, when we make a noun definite, we take off the Dhamma, the extra Dhamma, and we put Aleph and Lam. With this construction, the possessive construction, we remove one of the dhammas. However, the word that comes after it, now Muhammad, to say Muhammad's book, then also this changes to kasra. So it becomes kitabu Muhammadin, like this, Muhammadin. So this is how we say Muhammad's book, kitabu Muhammadin. So that change occurs now, and that is called the mudaf, mudaf ilayhi. And this is the mudaf al kitab kitabu and the mudaf ilayhi Muhammadun. So al mudafu the possess the possession wal mudaf ilayhi the one who possesses that thing. Okay. Now it's Muhammad's book, so he's the mudaf ilayhi. How do we know that? Because it's Muhammadin. It takes kasra. So kitabu Muhammadin Muhammad's book. So when we look at this uh, dialogue, inshallah, we're going to look at every single time we see this construction. Okay, so from here it says Saeed. Akitabu Muhammadin hada ya yasiru. Is this Muhammad's book? Oh yasir? La. Hada kitabu Hamidin. No, this is Hamid's book. You see the construction? Kitabu Hamidin. Aina kitabu Muhammadin. Where's Muhammad's book? Huwa ala al maktabi hunaka. It is on the desk over there. Hunaka meaning over there. Huna meaning over here. Something close to us. Aina daftaru ammarin. Where's Ammar's exercise book? Huwa ala al maktabi al mudarrisi. Huwa ala maktabi al mudarrisi. Again, the same construction. It is on the teacher's desk. Qalamu man hada ya aliyu. Whose pen is this, O oh Ali? هذا قلم المدرس. This is the teacher's pen. أين حقيبة المدرس? Where's the teacher's bag? هي تحت المكتب. It is underneath the desk. Okay. So the first rule that we learned in this lesson is المضاف والمضاف إليه. Possession, possessor. So المضاف, the possession, والمضاف إليه, the possessor. And we had Kitabun plus Muhammadun equals Kitabu Muhammadin. Now, another thing that we learn in this lesson that we need to uh, explain is Ya, the usage of Ya. Ya in the Arabic language is used to call someone, okay? We use Ya to call someone, get someone's attention. And it's called Al Munada, the thing that is being called. So, ya, we saw in this lesson, ya, ya siru. Okay, ya ya siru, oh ya sir. This is when you're calling ya sir. Originally, ya sir is written like this, ya sirun, with a tenwin here. However, when we use ya to call someone specific, then this gets deleted and we only have one, ya ya siru. Ya Muhammadu, like this. Ya Aliyu, we delete one of these uh, dhammas of the tanwin. Okay?
So that is how we use yeah. Another thing in this lesson is now we're learning some adverbs of place. Adverbs of place. And that is like this. Tahta. Here it says Tahta al maktabi. Tahta means underneath. The opposite of this is Fawqa. On top of. So this is also used as Mudaf. Mudaf ilay. So whatever comes after Tahta is the Mudaf ilayhi. So Tahta is the Mudaf. So we say Tahta al maktabi. Like this. And whatever comes after it takes Kasra. Or Fawqal Maktabi, like this. Okay? So, Tahta on top of, uh, underneath, sorry. Tahta is underneath. Fawqa is on top of. Yani Fawqal Maktabi is on top of the table, like this. Okay? So, there is, this is another usage of the Mudaf and the Mudaf Ilayhi. And also, the Ya of Nida. Ya Muhammad. Ya Aliyu. Ya Ustadu. Ya mudarrisu, like this. So now it's time to practice this formula. So here you can see uh, in this exercise right here, it says adif al kalima al ula ila thaniya. So make the first word possession of the second word. So here it says kitabun and then muhammadun and it becomes kitabu muhammadin. This is an example done for you. Then it says maktabun al mudarrisu. That becomes Maktabul Mudarrisi. So it wants you to follow this example and answer the following questions. And as I said, when you do the, these questions and work and fill out these, um, these exercises, you can post your picture of your exercise in the Facebook group, which the link is on the website, inshallah, under contact us. And I will do my best to mark it as soon as possible. Just whenever you um, post it, just say, look, tag my name and exercise two, three, or whatever it is, from which lesson, lesson five. And then I will mark it appropriately, inshallah, accordingly. So here, qalamun hamidun, you're going to change that. And I'll just do this one for you so you can just get used to this usage, this pattern. It becomes qalamu hamidin, hamidin. So qalamu, instead of qalamun, qalamu hamidin, hamidin, like this. Okay, so you're going to do the same for the rest of the following exercises. Then we have this exercise here. It says, Iqra waktub ma'adabti awakhil al kalimat. Read and write whilst putting the correct vowel sounds on the end of each word. We've seen this terminology so much now, and inshallah ta'ala, we should understand it and know what, that we need, know what we need to do. Then we have number four, al rabi' Iqra. Just read. So this is reading practice. Practice reading it correctly. There's no vowel sounds there. There's no tashkil. This is to aid you in getting used to reading without any vowel sounds and be able to recognize the rules that you've learned so far when there's a change, okay? And when a word takes kasra instead of dhamma and the likes. So, or when there's no tinweed, when there is tinween. This is reading practice, inshallah. And you have about 18 sentences to practice with. Please read them and practice reading them again and again and again. And make sure you know what every word means. Sometimes what my teacher used to do is when I had an exercise like this, he would say, write it as well. There's no problem. Write it out and then also translate it into English. Translate each sentence into English as this will help build up your vocabulary. So as we can see in this lesson, as I mentioned, we're, we're practicing that rule of mudaf, mudaf ilay again to show the possession and the possessor, i.e. the thing that is possessed and the one who owns that thing. So further exercises to practice now. Uh, sorry, there was 20 sentences, not 18. as two more on this page. As you can see, كوّن جملا مفيدة بملء الفراغ فيما يلي. Reading from here. كوّن جملا مفيدة بملء الفراغ فيما يلي. Make form beneficial sentences filling by filling the gaps in what follows. So he had البيتي مغلق. Something of the house is closed. This is the first one. It's going through as an example. So you're going to need to figure out what is the most suitable word to go in that empty space to form your sentences. Now let's do this one together. So al-bayti muglakun. Something of the house is closed. The thing that comes to my mind is bab. So I would say babu al-bayti. Babu al-bayti. Like this. 
Babul Bayti. So Babul Bayti Muglaqun. So follow this example, inshallah ta'ala, and fill the empty spaces with a suitable noun. Now for this exercise number six, as sadis, it says Sahih at Tarkibat at Talia. It says correct the following compositions. So these sentences are wrong. So based on what we've just learned from the rules, as what I mentioned to you, for example, the Madaf cannot have Alif and Lam, and he doesn't have Tanween. As you can see, there's no Alif and Lam on this one, no Alif and Lam, and there's no Tanween. Okay, there's no extra Dhamma there. It's not Babun, it's Babu. So here, you have to observe this rule and correct the following sentences here to make sure that they are correct. Okay? Now, this... Exercise number seven is just emphasizing the rule I showed you regarding when we use ya. Yeah. Ya yeah, to call someone, to draw someone's attention to you. So ya yeah, Muhammadu. So it's not ya yeah, Muhammadun, it's ya yeah, Muhammadu. Oh Muhammad. And then whatever I'm saying, or oh, I would have said something prior to this. I said, uh, for example, Hadha Kitabun ya Muhammad. This is a book, oh Muhammad. So I'm drawing your attention to what I've said. Okay, oh ya yeah, Muhammad. Aina tadhab, where are you going? Like this, okay? So this is the usage of ya. Yeah. Ya yeah, to call someone, draw someone's attention. So again, iqra' waktub ma'adabti awakhil al kalimat. I'm sure you know what that means by now. Uh, so you know what you have to do. Ya aliyun or ya aliyu. You tell me which is correct, inshallah ta'ala. Then we have exercise number eight here. It says, iqra' al mithal al ati thumma kawwin as illatan mithlahu. Mushiran ila surit taliya. It says, read the example, the following example. Then form questions like it, uh, directing a, using or directing towards or alluding to the following uh, pictures. So, kitabu man hada. Kitabu man hada. Whose book is this? The book of who is this? I.e., who owns this thing? This is how we say. Who does this belong to using this possessive construction? Because man will get, re will get replaced by the actual noun. So let's say it's Muhammad's book. It becomes Kitabu Muhammadin. Hada Kitabu Muhammadin. Kitabu man hada. Whose book is this? Hada Kitabu Muhammadin. So now we have a picture of a pen. Do you remember how to say pen in Arabic? Because now you're going to replace Kitab with pen. So it's going to be something like Qalamu man hada Whose pen is this? Now you follow that exact same example and complete this exercise, insha'Allah ta'ala. Now we have exercise number nine, ismun. Ismun, it means a noun, but it's also used to refer as a name, so someone's name. So you say, ismul waladi, as it says it here, ismul waladi muhammadun. Okay, but look here, ismun. This first letter is called Hamza al Wasl. We do not pronounce it unless it comes in the beginning of a sentence. So as you can see, where it says in the first line here, right here, it says Ismul Waladi Muhammadun. Wasmu. And it's written like this. You see that little sign above the alif? Wasmu. That means I skip it. I don't say wa ismu. I say wasmu. Wasmul binti. Zainab, like this. So that's just to practice how we're supposed to read this type of alif, which is called Hamza al Wasl. It's only pronounced in the beginning of a sentence and it's not pronounced in the end of a sentence. So practice with the following sentences under exercise number nine. And lastly, the last exercise, Iqra ma yali mura'iyan qawa'idi nutqi Hamza al Wasl. It says, Iqra. Read ma yali, what follows, mura'iyan, paying attention, observing, qawa'id nutqi the rules of pronouncing hamza al wasl the hamza al wasl that hamza, as I mentioned to you, that looks like an alif, it's called hamza al wasl Why? Because we pronounce it in the beginning of a sentence, but if it comes after a letter, we don't pronounce it. And so let me read this number one for you. Let me read number one. It says, Ibnu Muhammadin fil Iraqi wabnu. We see, wabnu, not wa ibnu, wabnu hamidin fil hindi. So this is how it's supposed to be read correctly. Now I want you to follow that example and read the following sentences, inshallah ta'ala. And as you know, as we mentioned here, al-kalimat al-jadida, 
our new lesson, our new words from this lesson. And uh, always refer back to the vocab bank as these words are all there for you and even more. So a quick summary. In this lesson, we learn what is referred to as al mudafu This is the constructions called al mudafu wal mudafu ilayhi. That's the possessor and the possession. Possession and possessor. Okay? So al mudaf wal mudafu ilayhi. So we have kitabu. Sorry, let me rub that out, write that better for you guys. Kitabu Muhammadin Ibn Hamidin. Just examples of this rule in application. Okay, also we learn ya. Yeah. The ya yeah of calling someone, drawing someone's attention, and that becomes ya yeah, Muhammadu. Okay, you can see, Ya Muhammadu and not Ya Muhammadun. Or Ya Hamidu. We say Ya Hamidu. Ya Hamidu. And that is how we use Ya to call someone. So, inshallah ta'ala. Any questions as well, please contact me. Uh, maybe we can book a short time, a call or something where I can explain something in uh, more detail for you. Or please participate in our Facebook group. Keep it active. And questions can get answered there. You can go live there and answer your questions for you. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at the Arabic school. So that is the end of lesson five. Jazakum Khairan. And I hope to see you next lesson.